In this video, we are going to talk about gluten. I'm going to share my opinions on gluten and why I think that you, if you're interested in your health, should immediately eliminate it from your dietary intake. We're going to talk about the agenda behind gluten and how it is being pushed on everybody. We're going to talk about why the system wants you to consume massive amounts of this toxic garbage. And we're going to talk about why the food pyramid was designed that, you know, on the bottom, the bottom of the food pyramid, the food that you should, the foods that you should be eating the most of, it's gluten-containing constituents, cereals and whole grains and pastas and breads. We're going to talk about how gluten, a family of proteins, of which there are two main proteins, is incredibly inflammatory to the human digestive system and body at large. We're going to talk about how gluten and the constant consumption of gluten renders it very difficult for your body over time to digest and absorb nutrients from any food that you eat, regardless of whether it's gluten or meat or fats or carbohydrates. All that and much more. Stay tuned. You're not going to want to miss this. What is going on, you guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a new video. Let's talk about gluten. Why are they putting gluten in everything? Why is wheat, barley, rye, spelt, kamut, why are all these grains and starches that are abundant in gluten, why are they in, why is there such an abundance of these foods containing gluten? Why is it that on the food pyramid, on the bottom of the pyramid, the one food that you should be eating most of, it's foods containing gluten? So there's plenty of research out there Luna bug. There's plenty of research out there showing that gluten sensitivities are through the roof. Gluten intolerance is through the roof. If you look into the research of Dr. Peter Glidden and Dr. Joel Wallach, you'll realize that according to them, upwards of 85% of the population has a gluten sensitivity. We can't digest it. We are not designed to be digesting gluten, folks. And I know that kind of goes against standard logic because the system's standard logic tells you to eat plenty of this shit. Eat cereals and grains and fortified oats, you know, granola bars and all this other bullshit. Again, look at the bottom of the food pyramid. Whole grains and all this other nonsense. These are foods that are abundant in gluten. We cannot, as humans, digest gluten properly. Now, gluten is a family of proteins found in grains and starches, such as, but not limited to, uh, wheat, barley, rye, kamut, spelt. You can find gluten in couscous, simonilla, and a handful of other things. Now, out of this family of proteins, there are two main proteins. Again, there are two main proteins. And these are your, your it's your gliadin, or your gliadin, and your glutenin. And out of these two main proteins, gliadin is the one that is most, it causes the most uh, havoc in people's systems. So, it's a very difficult protein to digest and it causes a lot of inflammation, folks. It causes a whole lot of inflammation. On top of that gluten, this family of proteins found in these grains and starches, when it goes into your system and moves through your small intestine, it damages your villi. It destroys the absorptive tissue and surfaces of your small intestine. It destroys the tissues of your digestive system, making it very difficult over time to absorb nutrients from other foods. That is the genius behind gluten. It destroys the digestive system, folks. And we all know that if the digestive system is destroyed, you don't digest things properly, do you? Gluten destroys the villi, the microvilli. It destroys and damages and renders weak your digestive capabilities. So weakened digestion means weakened absorption and you are only as healthy as your absorption. If you cannot absorb foods, you are not getting what you need out of them. 
That is the genius of gluten, folks. That is the genius of gluten. In my opinion, this is one of the most weaponized food sources in this dimension, and that's why it's in everything, and that's why they want this food group, foods that contain lots of gluten, they want that on the bottom of the standard food pyramid so that you eat a lot of this nonsense. This is a slave food, ladies and gentlemen, and it wreaks havoc on your entire system. It creates massive amounts of inflammation and cytokine storms within your body, within your physical temple, within your physiology. So people can find every excuse in the book to defend gluten because they don't want to accept the fact that you know what they ta were taught in school, there's some, f some falsehoods to it. I'm here to tell you that the food pyramid is designed to control you by getting you to think that the wrong food groups are designed to be put in your body. This is a criminal act by the powers that be and they know damn well the effects of a lot of these foods that they want us to consume. Gluten being one of them. There is a total weaponized agenda behind gluten and that's why again the bottom of the food pyramid explains all of it. And this food pyramid, the standard food pyramid, it's what we're taught in schools. It's what we're taught is the healthiest diet, you know, high carbohydrate, low fat, eat a lot of vegetable oils and all this other nonsense. So I'm gonna share with you two tips that can drastically improve your health if you want to take these tips and do something creative with it. This channel is designed for you to participate. And if you wanna participate in some of the things that I talk about, I have a strong feeling that you'll benefit greatly from them if you integrate these tips and these lessons I teach here on this channel into your life, if you make them part of your day-to-day -day habits. So do an oil change, not on your vehicle, but on your body and get rid of the gluten. Get rid of the oils that you're currently eating because there's a good chance you're consuming vegetable oils. Vegetable oils do not belong inside the body. They create massive amounts of stress when consumed. They rancidify and they oxidize when they come into contact with oxygen and most vegetable oils have been exposed to oxygen. Uh, excuse me. They <laughs> Vegetable oils, during the manufacturing process, folks, they come into contact with oxygen. This causes them to rancidify. Vegetable oils oxidize, they rancidify, and by the time they get put into your system, they are degraded. They are not healthy. When we consume vegetable oils, these unhealthy fats, these polyunsaturated fatty acids, etc., that are abundant in most vegetable vegetable oils like grapeseed and canola, these fats get stuck into our system and weave into our bodies. These were not these were never designed to be put inside of our system. And in, in fact, I believe that these vegetable oils are absolutely industrial wastes that are being pre repackaged as you know convenient health foods. And don't tell me that vegetable oils aren't advertised as health foods because they are. Grape seed oil, which is massively abundant in polyunsaturated fats. Even I'm, I'm here to say that even olive oil is unhealthy. And I know that goes completely against standard logic. I know that goes completely against all of the marketing campaigns behind this multi-million dollar olive oil industry. But you guys, these oils, especially when you cook with them, are very toxic. When you cook with the oils, it increases the, or it produces something known as aldehydes, these toxic byproducts that when they go into your system, it creates massive amounts of oxidative stress and you get the production and you just get all these free radicals in your system. Your, your system basically turns on itself. You should not be cooking with oils. If you're going to be cooking with anything, you should be cooking with butter or in my opinion, uh, grass-fed beef tallow but there's about a million different ways to cook without oils. The whole thing is just very suspicious to me and after my deep research into vegetable oils, seeing how they're made, I just don't believe in any way, shape or form that we are designed to be consuming these nuts, seeds, or these vegetable oils, which is kind of a, you know, a misleading term because it's not like they're squeezing a bunch of oil out of vegetables. These are coming from nuts and seeds, etc. 
So even things like sesame oil, in my opinion, toxic. Corn oil, absolutely toxic. So I want to try to stay on gluten, you guys, but this is an important discussion because these two things can drastically improve your health. Doing an oil change, getting rid of all of the oils and getting rid of the gluten, getting rid of the whole, the, the wheat and the barley and the rye and the spelt and the kamut and the couscous, all the noodles and all the garbage and a lot of the stuff, you guys, a lot of like even condiments have gluten in it. So gluten induces massive amounts of inflammation within your system. It damages your body's digestive capabilities. It attacks your villi, your microvilli. It's a bad, bad thing. And a lot of people over time, they've been consuming gluten for so long. They've been consuming gluten for so long, you guys, that their digestion, it's just, it's just totally wrecked. Why do you think there's so many digestive issues here in the matrix? Why do you think digestive issues are so commonplace within so many people? You know, a hundred years ago, there were nowhere near as many issues with digestion. There were nowhere near as many issues in general, regardless of, you know, what it was. People were, had more vigor, people had more strength. There was nowhere near as much depression and psychosis and mental illnesses, you name it. Now, once the vegetable oils and the gluten came into the picture, the processed, refined carbohydrates and all the sugar, that's when our health skyrocketed downhill. So a lot of people, especially the uh, older generations, you guys, they've been consuming gluten for in abundance, as well as the vegetable oils for over 30, 40 years. And you see a lot of the classic symptoms in them. Accelerated aging, accelerated entropy, bad skin, bloated, obese. When you're, you know, there's a hidden hunger syndrome that comes from gluten. And let's just really explain this because I brought up obesity and I want to talk about obesity. Obesity is a nutrient deficiency. Again, obesity is a nutrient deficiency. That goes against standard logic as well, but I'm here to tell you guys that a lot of what we've been told are lies. Lunabug, it's over here. A lot of what we've been told is a bunch of bullshit. Over here, babe. Luna, right here. A lot of what we've been told is goddamn bullshit and I'm getting tired of it because I'm seeing so many people suffer unnecessarily from things that are totally avoidable. Obesity is a nutrient deficiency because when you're not absorbing all of your essential nutrients, your body being the incredible machine that it is sends you signals to have various cravings in an attempt to fulfill your nutrient deficiencies and fill up your nutrient gas tank. Dr. Peter Glidden explains this brilliantly in many of his lectures. So does Dr. Joel Wallach. You go out to eat at some fancy restaurant or some fast food joint. You get a bunch of food you engorge yourself, but you know, you get your little food coma, you spike, your, you spike your blood sugar, you get tired, you leave dinner, you think you're satisfied, and then an hour to three hours later, you're hungry again, you have ravenous hunger. It's because those processed carbohydrates and all the shit that you ate didn't have the nutrient abundance in it to turn off your hunger mechanisms. In a bug. You see, when you eat the right food, when you eat the right fats, the right mixture of carbohydrates and proteins, when you get all your micro minerals and your macro minerals, when you get all your nutrients, you feel satiated and you don't need to eat for hours. It's because you've fulfilled your nutrient reserves. But most people, when they go out to eat at restaurants, they're eating foods that have gluten in it, breads, pastas, carbohydrates, etc., desserts. So you eat these foods, for instance, you might go get a steak and a potato with a big old loaf of bread. That loaf of bread has gluten in it. Those, that family of proteins consisting of, consisting of two main proteins, gliadin or gliadin 
and glutenin. So gluten is a very sticky substance, folks. It's what's responsible for that chewy texture in bread that's so addicting. So you eat your steak, you eat your baked potato, which you shouldn't be eating baked potatoes for one because of our, you shouldn't be eating the skin of a baked potato, at least. We'll talk more about that in the near future. I first learned about that years ago from Dr. Joel Wallach and it's cutting edge information. So you eat your food and you, in between bites of your steak and your potato, you eat, you take bites of your bread, which is full of gluten. Gluten increases or induces inflammation within the digestive system and many other parts of the physiology and it renders your body unable to properly digest the foods that you were eating. The other foods that you ate with your gluten, your steak, your potato, your vegetables, whatever it was. And on top of that, a lot of people are consuming uh, carbonated beverages while they're consuming their food, which also renders your body unable to properly assimilate nutrients. We were not designed to consume excessive amounts of fluids while we were eating food, especially fluids, folks that are carbonated. It makes mineral absorption very difficult. It puts strain on the digestive system. You shouldn't really be consuming fluids while you're eating, at least in my opinion. People oftentimes crave fluids while they're eating food because we live in a culture that we kind of think that that's normal. And on top of that, people are eating foods that aren't nutrient they're overly, uh, they're over, they're filled full of sodium. And I'm not saying that salt is bad. I'm a huge fan of salt, but there's excessive amounts of salts in these processed foods, way too much. So can you see how the picture is wrong? You know, the, can you see how there's an issue here? Now gluten, you guys, because of how sticky it is and because most people don't masticate food properly, when they eat it, when they eat bread, when they eat pastas, they take a couple of bites and then they swallow this very sticky sub substance. This creates massive amounts of mucus in the body to compensate for the stickiness. And on top of that, you end up caking your digestive system with sticky glutinous, glutinat, glutinaginous, is that a word? Gluten residues which stick on to your digestive system, in your digestive system, excuse me, and damages your absorptive tissues. I hope that makes sense. That didn't really come out the way I wanted it to. But long story short, one of the biggest assaults that gluten has on human beings is its ability to destroy your digestive system, to wreak havoc on your digestive system. Gluten, these, these, these proteins, especially gliadin, it's like, ladies and gentlemen, missiles on your microvilli, on your digestive system, on your absorptive tissues, on your small intestine. Now, gluten doesn't just affect the digestive system. It's intimately connected to brain disorders. It inflames the brain. It attacks the brain. So a lot of people think like, oh, I got tested for celiac disease. And celiac disease is related to the small intestine and it's a digestive disorder. It's a, it's, a, it's a very extreme gluten sensitivity and intolerance. So a lot of people think, oh, I got tested for celiac. I don't have a gluten intolerance. Again, folks, if you look into the research of Dr. Peter Glidden, upwards of 85% of the population has a gluten sensitivity, has a gluten intolerance. And in my opinion, it's through the roof. It's even more than that. I don't think that this shit was ever designed to be put in the human body. And I think that that's why the New World Order made it the primary food group at the bottom of the pyramid on the food pyramid to ensure that you eat this shit that destroys your digestive system when your digestive system is destroyed, as we already went over, you don't absorb nutrients from the food you eat. And when you don't absorb nutrients from the food you eat, you constantly crave food to compensate for your lack of nu nutrient satiation and you get obese. Obesity is a nutrient deficiency because if you ate the right foods, if you got everything in the right proportions, if you didn't have a digestive system that was destroyed through gluten and all the oils and all the crap, you'd be able to absorb your nutrients. And when you absorb your nutrients, your hunger hormones, your system becomes satiated to the point where you don't need to eat any more food. It's very simple. 
do you really think that the creator designed us to constantly need food just constantly over and over and over and over again? No, it's because people are eating all the pastas, all the breads, all the bullshit. And don't tell me that they don't because we know statistically that the average American consumes over 130 to 133 pounds of wheat a year. And that's just wheat. That's just wheat. What about all the barley and the rye, all the nonsense? What about the oats? What about these inflammatory substances that create these cytokine storms within our systems? Our system basically attacks itself when these glutinous foods are consumed, these grains, etc. I wanted to personally thank you for watching my videos and contributing to the growth of my channel. I could not do this without you, and your interest in my content is truly what motivates me and fuels my passion for making these videos and spreading my message. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. I wanted to remind you that this channel is a free educational tool that is listener supported, and if you would like to donate to my channel and donate to my cause, help make my life a little bit easier and help keep the lights on around here, you can do so by checking out the links in the description box below. There's a handful of not only ways to donate to my channel, but I also have links to different websites and different videos of mine, as well as my Amazon store, where you can check out a handful, a plethora of different health-related products that I use and recommend. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, Thank you so much for your continued interest in my message and until next time, peace be with you all.